Hello and welcome to the second tutorial in the SFML 2.1 tutorial series and in this part we're going to be looking at setting up on Windows. We will go through the process of downloading and setting up a project on Windows. SFML has great documentation on how to set up on other platforms such as Linux and Mac. Some prerequisites, you will obviously need a Windows machine. Uh, that can be a native installation or a virtual machine, both work great. You will also need Visual Studio C++ desktop installed. We recommend the latest version. I, we've got 2013, at least that's what I believe we have. Let's type it in, Visual Studio for desktop. Yeah, we have 2013. Once you have uh, all that and what you need to do is go and download SFML. And if you just go to your web browser, and then you want to go to sfml-dev.org. There will be a link in the description to the download or to this website. Click on download. Click this button here. 2.1 is the latest at the moment. And then, obviously, depending on what you're doing, uh, we're going to be doing Windows. So just click on the 2012. Or maybe you want to use an old one, but we're going to be using 2012 and we'll be actually using that within a 2013 Visual Studio. Unless you have a particular need for 64-bit, just stick with 32-bit. Uh, most people won't have a need for the 64-bit version, so to help compatibility, stick with the 32-bit. Okay, so what we're going to do is now we're going to create an empty project because I already have this downloaded. So what I'm going to do is just create an empty Visual Studio project. So I'm going to do Visual Studio. Then once that opens, if it ever opens, I'm pretty sure I did click open on it. Let's go back. Yes, for desktop. Oh, there we go. Open two copies now. Let's just close one of them. Okay, and now in this one, create a new project. Save it wherever you want. And I'm make sure it's a console application. And I'm gonna call it just tutorial SFML. Save it on the desktop, click A OK. Then you get another window popping up. And what we're just gonna say is click next. We're gonna click console application, which is selected, click empty project. Just de-click the security development lifecycle checks and now click finish. Let's let this finish. Okay, yeah. now we've got this done. Sorry about that. Put that on vibration or silent. And now what we're going to be doing is if we just go to our SFML file that we downloaded, and what we need is to copy this file folder right here with all these other folders in there to our project. So we just copy this, go to desktop, tutorial SFML, and what we can do is just paste it in here. So it's going to control, copy and paste it right here. It's going to take a moment. Once that is done, we're going to be opening up the project's properties and setting that up. In other tutorials online, you might find not just with SFML, with other um, APIs. What they're doing is setting this up maybe like in a C directory and then reference that directory. And we don't actually like doing that. What we like doing is having it within your project and then referencing it relatively so you can move the project wherever you want and it's not a specific towards that particular machine. So you can take this Visual Studio project to maybe to a university computer, if you're a university student, take it to a laptop, to your computer, and as long as you've got Visual Studio and Windows on there, it'll work a okay. Because if you just right click and click properties, the actual file isn't too big, it's only 44, 45 megabyte. Therefore having duplicate instances isn't too much of an issue. Okay, so what we're gonna wanna do is go to a project, right click here, click properties, and then what we're going to do is go to C, C++, click on the general uh, tab here and add the following to the additional include directory. So I'll just click this drop down, click edit and click this new button right here. We're going to do dollar, open bracket solution, DIR, close bracket for slash SFML-2.1 or whatever that SFML folder was that you put there. Then we're going to put forward slash include, and now we can click OK. Still within the C and C++, click on the all options and add the same to the additional include directories in here. We'll click edit, 
click this new and we're going to be dollar solution dir close bracket forward slash sfml dash 2.1 forward slash includes make sure that looks okay it does to me uh, and now what you want to do we can just close this down this one here go to linker then you want to click on general and add the following to the additional library directories so if you drop down click edit add new and for this we're going to do dollar solution dir close bracket for slash sfml dash 2.1 for slash lib click ok still within the link I click on input and add the following to the additional dependencies there's already some there but we can just ignore them we don't need to delete or anything delete them or anything click edit now in here you want to do sfml dash main dash d dot lib sfml dash graphics dash d dot lib sfml dash window dash d dot lib sfml dash system dash d dot dot lib then we're going to do sfml dash audio we're just including all the libraries so we can use them then we create a project dash d dot lib then we'll do sfml dash network dash d dot lib quickly let's go over all these make sure they look a okay and they look fine to me so just click OK we are now done with the properties of the project so what we're going to do is just click apply click OK now open up our project we're going to go to SFML go to the bin directory and we're going to copy all of these dynamic link libraries in here control C and what we're going to want to do is just go to basically our project here it's the same name as our root directory which is this then within here we got some more files and if you just copy and paste these the project is now actually set up we can just create a main CPP file with some SFML code so if we just right click our project add class mm. not class uh, right click a new new item you want to do a CPP file I'm going to call it main because that's where it's going to go the main function is so do that. Then in here, you're going to do hash include sfml forward slash mm. graphics.hpp. And then we're going to do int main. And now in here, what we're simply going to be doing is sf render window window. And in here we're going to be doing SF video mode 600 by 600. We're going to put SFML works. And now the next step is to do while. And in here we're going to do while window dot is open. Basically, this just says. I think you can guess what, it's, what it means is while this SFML render window is still open, perform this functionality which will be uh, checking for input, um, updating our game and drawing out that cycle will be continually going until the user somehow closes the application or the window. So we're going to do, maybe if you click the X, that's one way. Window.clear, this basically clears all the drawing and then you do window display and you put any drawing that you want to do between the two lines so if we just click on the debug let it run okay so now that we have our SFML render window working and we have an SFML project set up as well like I said SFML has good documentation so if you want to you run it on Mac or if you want to run it on Linux, check those out or you can just uh, message us at support.sonosystems.co.uk or just comment on this video and we will try and help.
A lot of basic window features such as the event handling of the close button, if I click this nothing happens, doesn't work and this needs to be implemented separately. This will be done over the next few tutorials, we'll be looking at events. One thing to note is that the coordinates start in the top left corner in SFML, aka the top left is 0, 0 and because we've done our window size uh, 600 by 600, so let's just open this back up. Oops, then, I think I need events, let's just run it again. Okay, if this is zero zero, let's oh, 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 I forgot can I move it without the events. If this is zero zero, what this will be is six hundred by six hundred, this will be six hundred by zero, and this will be zero by six hundred. So that's just a little thing to know because other um, APIs such as Cocos 2 dx do it differently, they have zero zero in the bottom left. Okay, we now have a SFML project set up on Windows. In the next part of this series, we're going to just briefly have an introduction to events. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video or just directly message us via YouTube. We will also have a link in the description to this project. And you can just run it on your machine if you have all the prerequisites like Windows and Visual Studio set up and you should be all good to go. So. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a nice day.